Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Our top story, an illegal Chinese immigrant arrested after breaching a U.S. military base in California. From scuba diving at rocket launch sites to snapping photos of White House communication gear, a look at the growing trend of Chinese tourists getting lost at sensitive U.S. military bases. Eight Chinese immigrants found dead off the coast of southern Mexico. They were aboard a boat traveling along a dangerous route often used to illegally enter the United States. In for the money, but trap without notice. China has been hitting foreign executives with exit restrictions. How long do they have to stick around? And what does it say about China's business environment under the communist regime? And a former Taiwanese president is visiting China and might meet with regime leader Xi Jinping. Yet some demonstrators are protesting the trip and voicing a message, don't be a traitor. He said that everyone should believe in Xi Jinping, but we all know that Xi Jinping cannot be trusted. Another Chinese national found breaching a U.S. military base. The illegal Chinese immigrant was arrested last Wednesday after entering a U.S. military base in El Centro, California. Officials said he drove onto the military base without an ID and ignored orders to leave. The man has been taken into custody and an investigation into the case is underway. The incident comes as a growing number of Chinese nationals posing as tourists have tried to enter U.S. military bases. And concerns about Chinese espionage are growing as more single Chinese men come through the southern border. Over there, the number of illegal Chinese crossers are hitting a record high. Over 24,000 of them entered the border illegally last year. That's a 1,000 percent spike compared to the year before. And over 18,000 already came in through the border this year as of February. Also in recent years, a potential espionage threat is on the rise. Chinese nationals posing as tourists have reportedly accessed U.S. military bases and sensitive sites for as many as 100 times. That's according to a report from The Wall Street Journal citing unnamed sources. Casey Fleming is the chairman and CEO of Black Ops Partners, a business consultant in Washington, D.C. Here's his take on the issue. Espionage and, and checking our readiness and our security capabilities on our bases. And don't, don't, assume, don't expect that it's just our bases. It's where our people leave the bases, where they go frequent, hang out, and so on. It's not just limited to the bases. Um, it's all of the, uh, all the above. Reported cases are scattered across America. Some detail Chinese nationals posing as tourists, leaving designated tour areas of the White House to take photos of communication gear and security guards' positions. Chinese nationals also appear to be scuba diving off a launch site for U.S. spy satellites in Florida. Chinese gate crashers were also found stepping into a U.S. missile ranch in New Mexico. Last year, a car of Chinese nationals drove onto a military base in Alaska. In 2020, three Chinese nationals were sentenced to around a year in prison for entering a naval base in Key West to take photos. In 2019, a Chinese student was sentenced to a year behind bars for taking photos at the same military base. The student, Zhao Qianli, was 20 years old. His lawyer said he was a tourist that got lost. But Zhao's camera and cell phone only had photos taken at the military base stored on them. In the same year, the U.S. reportedly expelled two Chinese diplomats quietly. That's after the pair and their wives drove onto a military base in Virginia, home to highly sensitive facilities used for Navy SEAL training. Though not all of them were handed serious penalties, U.S. officials told the Wall Street Journal that in many cases, the Chinese gate crashers have been briefly detained and escorted out of the U.S. Eight illegal Chinese immigrants found dead off the coast of Mexico. That's after the boat they were traveling in capsized. This always happens. 100 enter the mountain and only 50 or 60 get out of it alive. A lot of people die there, drowned, dehydrated, or bitten by a snake. Others fall off a cliff, others disappear inside the mountain and never come back. 
The bodies of seven women and a man were found in southern Mexico on Friday. The Chinese nationals were heading north towards the U.S. They were guided by a Mexican national. The accident took place when the vessel capsized, leaving the migrants stranded in the sea. Only one of them survived. The victims haven't been identified yet. Authorities are working with the Chinese embassy in Mexico. Switching gears to business news, foreign executives could find themselves held hostage inside China, possibly for years. A report shows the regime has been hitting foreign nationals with exit restrictions over business disputes. NTD's Sam Wong has more. According to the Wall Street Journal, this measure typically would not apply to those who committed a crime. Instead, it targets individuals involved in civil litigations. The policy has trapped a wide variety of people ranging from small business owners to high-profile executives. It even applies to those who cut ties with companies that are facing legal issues in China. In many cases, people subject to an exit ban only find out about it during travel. They can be stopped at any airport and train station, where authorities pull out their names from a national database. Sometimes they're stopped without being told why, and they often don't know how long they'll have to stick around in China. Through an online core database, the Wall Street Journal has found 37 cases of foreign nationals barred from leaving the country. But experts say the actual figure is much higher. Some have recorded a total of more than 150 such cases. As China seeks to attract foreign capitals into its economy, the nation is battling with a dilemma. It first promises investor with a flourishing market, but then hit him with exit bans without due process. In the past year, Beijing has also raided a number of foreign due diligence firms under the banner of its so-called anti-espionage campaign. One island, two opposing views on the future. Former Taiwanese President Ma Jingyou is embarking on a trip to China. He's leading a group of students to visit the mainland for cultural exchange activities. This time, I took the young students from my foundation to visit mainland China again. We hope that at a time when the situation between the two sides of the Taiwan Strait is tense, we will convey the desire of the people of Taiwan to pursue peace, to have cross-strait exchanges, and to avoid war. The Chinese Communist Party sees Taiwan as part of China despite never having ruled it. The current Taiwanese president, Tsai Ing-wen, and her Democratic Progressive Party are staunch supporters of Taiwan's self-governing status. Ma ying party, the Kuomintang, holds a different view. It traditionally favors close ties with China, though it also denies being pro-Beijing. We are worried about Ma ying insistence on going to China. He said that everyone should believe in Xi Jinping, but we all know that Xi Jinping cannot be trusted. Democracies around the world are guarding against China's expansion, and only Ma ying and his foundation see Xi as an old friend. The Democratic Progressive Party won the 2016 presidential election by a landslide. It also won an unprecedented third term earlier this year when President-elect William Lai claimed victory. Ma remains a senior member of his party and is expected to meet with Chinese leader Xi Jinping during his trip. There has been no official confirmation yet. The Biden administration on Friday revised rules aimed at making it harder for China to access U.S. artificial intelligence chips and chipmaking tools. It's part of a bigger effort to impede Beijing's chipmaking industry over fears tied to national security. The rules seek to halt shipments to China of more advanced AI chips designed by NVIDIA and others. That's to block Beijing from being able to use them to advance its military. Not only do the rules cover shipments of chips, they also apply to laptops containing those chips. The new restrictions go into effect on Thursday. The Commerce Department has said it plans to continue updating its restrictions on technology shipments to China as it seeks to strengthen and fine-tune the measures. As the Israel-Hamas war rages, which side is China on? Despite the terrorist group's deadly attacks on Israel, the Chinese regime has yet to condemn Hamas. How does Israel read that decision? For an insider perspective, we sat down with Moshe Foglin, former deputy speaker of the Israeli Knesset and leader of the Zahut Party. Moshe Foglin, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you on the show. Thank you, Tiffany. 
Now, thousands of people took to the streets in both Tel Aviv and Jerusalem over the weekend. This is protesting the continuation of the Israel-Hamas war, but this was the biggest protest in Israel since the start of the war. Now, there's also been a lot of international pressure on this, especially on Israel. We saw China and Russia vetoing a U.S.-led ceasefire and hostage release resolution at the U.N. Now, China has yet to condemn Hamas over the October 7th terrorist attack. How does Israel read China's stance here? Well, of course, I'm representing myself over here uh, and not the official uh, Israeli opinion, but uh, as the deputy as a, the deputy speaker of the Knesset, which I, which I was, I can tell you that I'm not surprised at all. China represents um, evil values, basically. And uh, the way China deals with the human rights and, and any kind of uh, basic human values put China uh, automatically in, in the evil side of history. And that's why I'm definitely not surprised where the Chinese uh, regime is supporting Hamas. The worst pogrom, if I may say, the worst behavior against any kind of humanity that we saw since the Holocaust, since World War II, that appeared a uh, half a year ago at the 7th of October, didn't, did not move any, any uh, you know, inch of, of, or any moral opinion of China. It's, it's, uh, it was not surprising for me at all that China did not condemn it. On that note, you also said recently on an Israel TV station that the state of Israel, which is a Jewish state and is supposed to project the eternal values of the Jewish people to be a light to all other people, cannot embrace China. And expand on that a bit for us. I was sitting in the, in one of the TV uh, program uh, with with a with a very famous professor in Israel, and the question was, how should Israel deal with the American pressure that that now going down very hard on us? And uh, that professor, which I appreciate very much, his name is Mordechai Kedal. Uh, um, said that Israel should start looking for different other allies and mentioned China as well. And even though I definitely agree that Israel should disconnect its total connection to the United States because various reasons and, 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 and uh, do not lean just with the one line relationship but deal with much wider scale of nations. When he mentioned China, I, I, I told him that China is definitely not the solution. Israel cannot see China as an ally as long as China represents this evilness of the Communist Party. Moshe Fagelin, thank you so much for your time. You're very welcome. Next, a roundup of short headlines from China and around the world. France's foreign minister is in China on Monday, meeting with some of Beijing's senior officials. He brought up his concerns over North Korea providing Russia with missiles and called for a ceasefire in Gaza. The same day, Beijing said China would take resolute countermeasures if Washington restricts Hong Kong officials from entering the U.S. That's after a Friday announcement from the U.S. State Department. The plan is to impose new visa curbs targeting a group of Hong Kong officials. That's to oppose violations of human rights and freedom in Hong Kong under the Chinese Communist Party. Those problems ramped up even more under the recently passed security law, Article 23. Moving to East Asia, media outlet Nikkei reported last Saturday that Japan and the EU are eyeing more cooperation. Both are looking to cut down their reliance on China for rare metals since the materials are key to future microchip innovation. The improved cooperation is slated to begin as soon as this month. 
Back in the U.S., President Biden is getting ready to host Japan's prime minister. According to a top Japanese newspaper, the two leaders are expected to announce plans to work together in the high-tech industry, including AI. The visit is slated for April 10th. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for three years. If you'd like to support us, consider donating. Find us at donorbox.org slash China dash in dash focus or subscribe to our partner platform Epic TV where you can watch our full episodes. Just click the link down below. Here's what to look out for in our second half. A new documentary called Hollywood Takeover is exposing the Chinese Communist Party's grip on Hollywood. We look at the details. If we take a step back and look at the whole theme of when China infiltrated, you know, it goes back to this soft power. Three presidents, one mission. Washington is reportedly arranging a trilateral summit with Japan and South Korea. The focus, how to quell Chinese aggression. And multiple gold shops in China have reportedly packed their bags and disappeared in a hurry, taking their gold with them. Police and customers are searching for them, hoping to recover the massive amount of missing gold. More on that after the break here on China in Focus. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow.